you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of Mark 9, please, and Luke 9. Mark chapter number 9, verse 20, and Luke 9, verse 37. I'll say this at the very beginning of this message this morning. I have to do this. I've had to wrestle with this thing and wrestle with it, and I've got to do it. And I pray when I'm done with it this morning, it'll be done. But only Almighty God knows that. Mark chapter number 9, verse 27. They brought to him, they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. He fell on the ground, wallow, wallowed foaming. He asked his father, How long is it since this came unto him? And he said of a child, and oft times it cast him into the fire, into the waters, to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou deaf, dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Then in Luke chapter number 9, verse 37, it says, And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he's mine only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him. And he suddenly cried out, and it tareth him that he foameth again and bruising him, hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. <coughs> and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, and healed the child, and delivered him unto his father. Again, unto his father. Bless your word now. In thy holy name, amen. And what I'm going to preach to you this morning is not a light subject. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be saying some things that may scare some of you. Especially if you're the kind of person who believes what you hear. And that's been corroborated by plenty of evidence. So I'm going to be saying things to you that uh, you'll be thinking about this afternoon. You may even think about it tonight when you go to bed. What I just read to you from the scripture from Mark 9, Luke 9, are two recorded cases of demon possession in the Word of God. Now regardless of what you've been taught by some modern theologian or some apostate church, demons are real. The scripture just simply speaks the fact and takes it for granted that you believe the Bible. And the Lord Jesus Christ dealt directly with demonic spirits, spoke to them as though they were intelligent and could answer. And then, of course, as you read in the scripture, they did. And you could see what they did to people that could have power over people to throw their bodies down and cause all kinds of problems upon a human being. A demon is an unclean spirit in the New Testament, a foul spirit. Don't ever let anybody tell you that they know where demons came from. They don't. I've heard people say they're the spirits of, uh, of the unsaved that come back from hell. I've heard people say that they're the disembodied spirits of a pre-Adamite race that was on this earth before the first Adam was made. I've heard people say that they are the spirits of the, uh, of the product of angels and uh, women in, Luke, in, in Genesis chapter number 6 that were called the Nephilim. I've heard all kinds of stories, fallen angels and what have you. Folks, nobody knows for certain what, where demons came from. Nobody. But we do know what they are. And we do know they're real. And we do know they exist. And as I said to you a moment ago before I got up to preach, sing a lot about Jesus. 
sing a lot about the blood because demons don't like that atmosphere. They like human exaltation, self-exaltation. They certainly love a religious atmosphere, but they despise any place that exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. So what I just read to you from the Gospels are two recorded cases of demon possession that took place 2,000 years ago. Now some of you may have never heard any of this that I'm going to give you this morning. Some of you may have heard some of it that I gave you Wednesday night. I have much more to say than I said Wednesday night, but I want you to listen to me. Because of all the preaching that I've done at Temple Baptist Church in 37 years, I consider what I'm going to say to you this morning some of the most important. For I believe every word that I'm going to read to you. I've done enough research into it, read enough material, and I am a Bible believer. I believe the Bible. A couple of years ago in Indiana, Indiana, a house was demon possessed. The mother, her children, all kinds of weird things were happening in that home. Two of the most physical, disturbing physical manifestations were witnessed by several medics and law enforcement officials. The first, Rosa recalled, was during a visit to a family physician, Dr. Geoffrey Onyakum, on April the 19th, 2012. Both focused on the youngest child, then seven. She recalled, I saw it trying to come out of him. It was trying to break loose in front of the door. It, of course, is she's referring to a demon. His head was turning, his eyes rolled back, his mouth went crazy. He started talking in tongues, then it threw my grandson completely across the floor. The nurse who witnessed this would not go back into the room while the doctor, realizing this was well beyond his capabilities, called police and paramedics to take the child and his brother, now listen carefully, both unconscious to Gary ER, to an emergency room. When there, in an emergency room, in the grips of demonic possession, his grandmother maintained her youngest grandson, growling and gurning, walked backwards toward a wall, then glided up it, walking backwards to above her head, holding her hands all the way as she tried to coax him down and it out, the demon, before flipping over her head and landing on the floor. The child had no reaction, no recollection of the event that was witnessed by the nurses, social workers, and paramedics, all of whom recorded it in official reports. Did you get this? This happened in an emergency room and was witnessed by nurses, social workers, paramedics, and they recorded it in their official records. The official records constitute over 600 pages of material about what happened that day. In USA Today, that was published a couple of days ago in reference to the same event, it says this. It says that the seven-year-old stared into his brother's eyes and began to growl again. It's time to die, the boy said in a deep, unnatural tone, I'm going to kill you. While the youngest boy spoke, the older brother started headbutting his grandmother in the stomach. His grandmother grabbed her grandson's hands and started praying. What happened next would rattle the witnesses and to some it would offer not only evidence, but proof of paranormal activity. According to Washington, and this is the, this is the DCS a representative, according to her report, an account corroborated by Walker, the nurse, the nine-year-old had a weird grin and walked backward up a wall to the ceiling. He then flipped over Campbell, landing on his feet. He never let go of his grandmother's hand. He walked up the wall, flipped over her, and stood there, Walker told the star. There's no way he could have done that. Now, when you hear something like that, you have to say to yourself, did that really happen? You've got to ask yourself the question, did this really happen? 
it happened. If it did happen, there is absolutely no logical, scientific explanation for why it happened. Now, I've read a number of responses from atheists, agnostics, skeptics, and what have you. And pro most of them, without doubt, say this. Well, I just, I wouldn't that make a difference. I don't believe that stuff. I just don't believe in that. I believe it's all made up a bunch of hallucinogenic stuff going on. Crazy people. I don't believe it. Now, let me tell you what, atheist, agnostic, and skeptic, let me tell you why you don't believe it. You've got a motive behind why you don't believe it. You don't believe it not because you've considered the facts, not because you'll even take time to check it out. You don't believe it because it comes exactly contrary, face on, against your God. Your God is science, falsely so-called. And this is something that your God cannot handle. This goes way above and beyond anything that human ability can define. So therefore, you reject it outright. Why? Because you do not want anyone to step into your life and tear down your little castle and tell you how to live. You want to go on living the way you want to go on living and just deny that this kind of thing happens. And in denial, you have peace. I deal with it. I don't deny it. I don't have to deny it. I'm a Bible believer. It doesn't surprise me one bit today that Satan can make a physical manifestation that defies human ability to walk backward up a wall and then flip over in front of someone is absolutely against all the laws of physics. Einstein would have a problem with this. He was, he was, he was a professor of physics. He's the man who, uh, who, along with uh, the other one, I can't think of his name, created the atomic bomb. A very brilliant man. But if Einstein had witnessed someone walk up a wall, he would have to go back into his study and he'd have to open up some books and he'd have to start doing some reading because everything he had learned up until that point had been challenged by what he saw. Now, if this really happened, folks, there's a problem going on today. What's that, preacher? What are you going to do with it? The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, He that letteth will let yeah, that's right. till he be taken out of the way. There is a restraining force in this world. There is a spirit war going on that you cannot see with your physical eyes unless these spirits choose to manifest themselves in certain ways. And I'll read some more here in a moment. Just as spine chilling is what I just read. Unless they choose to do that, if you are a real Bible believer, you don't even need to see that. You know that that world is real. And I'll also give you this warning, too. I'm going to warn you right now. If you are just, if it's just curiosity and a novelty to you, leave this alone. I pay a price when I get into this stuff. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to get into it. And God knows I've been at this a long time, but I know when I start into this, I'll pay a price for it. And I'm already seeing the price that I'll pay for it. But I've got to be obedient to God. Amen. That's more important. It's more important. There are people in this town, right here in this town, that are living this hell and this reality. They're living it. They live in houses that are demon-possessed. Now, put out of your mind the idea of a ghost being a departed spirit coming back of dead people. Ghosts, sure, they're real, but they are familiar spirits. They are demonic manifestations. It is the demon world out there, folks. It's a real world. We don't live in an enclosed little bubble where we are protected and, and, and segregated from all of the stuff going on in this world. If you reach out there into what's going on in this world, you can pay a dear price for it. Drugs, Ouija boards, the occult, in any form that it takes, will open you up for what's going on here. We have a mother, two children, a grandmother that live in this house, of what I can understand. And what I've read about it seems to be like that the demons came through the mother. 
and something that she had to do either with one of her former boyfriends or something going on, I don't know, but it came through there, they seem to think. And that from through her into the children and what's going on in this place. And folks, it's not just a house with these people. It's all these outside people, these professionals, doctors, police officers, nurses, social workers, Department of Children's Services, all these people. They're coming into this thing and they're observing this and they're watching it. They're talking about it, they're reporting and it. it's going down on paper. This is not some crazy wild thing that happens in the backwoods that nobody knows anything about. This is documented. So what are you going to do with it? He that letteth will let till he be taken out of the way. God has withheld this power of Satan from a lot of what's going on in America for a long time. Because we've had people that believed and prayed and sought the face of God and God's protected us and He's been good to us. But that hand is beginning to move back now and that dark world is beginning to open up and it's beginning to be manifested right out in front of your face and in your face with it. This is the kind of thing that's happening that blows the mind. Some of you kids ought to go home this afternoon and you ought to say to yourself, my teacher never taught me anything like that. My science book never said anything about something like that. I have put my faith in science, falsely so called. You're putting your faith in the wrong thing. Everything physical, everything physical that you know that exists, that we are conscious of, was created by an invisible spirit being. God Almighty spoke it into existence. That almighty being that is from everlasting to everlasting, that every demon of hell knows exactly who he is. The remarkable thing about this is that when you get into this stuff and you see this power coming against you and it blows your mind and your hair stands up on the back of your neck, you don't turn to physicians, you don't turn to science, you turn to Jesus. And they leave. The one that gave this kid the power to walk up a wall and flip over their head, you can't see with your naked eye, but he wrote this Bible that you hold in your hand. Amen. Jesus. It's quite a thing. Up there in Gary, Indiana, there's a captain. His name's Charles Austin. He's a captain on the police force. Been there for decades. He's 62 years old. He, the sergeant told me the children had been missing school. This is his own testimony. This captain said, the sergeant told me the children had been missing school and there was talk of satanic goings on. He was very leery of it. I contacted some people, high ranking officers. We decided to take a look. So the captain says we decided to take a look. I walked in there thinking it was nothing more than a hoax, a concocted story. Plain of words, skeptic from the very beginning. It's okay. I mean, he wants to find out what's going on. It is the conclusion of Captain Austin. It is the conclusion Captain Austin has drawn against every logical thought that told him that just could not be true. Speaking from Gary Police Department headquarters, he has run every department from narcotics to homicide, gang intelligence to auto detail. He has taught 500 officers, received the department's highest reward for his service. He doesn't believe in this sort of garbage. He thought he was being, f being, being fed in by the two women at Caroline Street and Gary two springs ago. So that makes him a good witness. Makes him a good one. I mean, here's a settled man, a mature man, a police officer, seen everything, been there for decades. You know, this man, he's been there. He said, I took pictures of the candles and crucifix under the stairs. Those pictures taken on his iPhone subsequently disappeared, he said, and the phone which he used that day never behaved the same again. He said, but before these images disappeared, he said he saw that they contained figures he had not seen before. Figures, he said, were not there before, standing around him and beneath the stairs. In plain words, he took a photograph. He thought he was taking a photograph of something. Didn't show up there, but later on on the photograph, here are all these people. According to Captain Austin, the officer took behind me, took pictures of me standing in front of him and his pictures. He saw lots of figures too. With a practiced narration of an experienced witness, he continued, I said, enough of this garbage. On leaving the property, I went to a gas station and made a phone call. This is the police officer talking now. He said, enough of this. 
I had my police radio, my squad car, dash AM FM radio, my police cell, and my iPhone. I was looking at the pictures I had taken on my iPhone when I made this call, and all of a sudden, this growling voice came from my AM FM radio. It said, you out of here. Then a lot of garbled other stuff and static. After that, according to Captain Austin, every other officer present that day had problems with their radios, phones, and house alarms. Most alarming for Captain Austin was an incident he had two weeks later when he was, he said, bluntly attacked. That's what happens when you get around these things. This Captain Police Force up there in Gary, Indiana said, I was attacked two weeks later. Here it is. Returning home in his Infinity SUV, he said, the electric door to my garage would not open. It had been fine before. I pressed the keypad. It must have been 10 times, then gave up. I exited the vehicle and went to flip the main power in the garage, but that didn't work. Then the house, and finally, it started working. But when I went back to my car, the driver's seat was just moving backwards and forwards by itself. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. When I took the car to the shop to get it looked into, they said, if I hadn't brought it in, it could have caused an accident and I could have been killed because for some reason, for some strange reason, the seat was about to collapse. They were after him. So this captain on the police force up there is a firm believer in what happened inside that home. Captain Charles Austin, it's easy to trace. Gary, Indiana is easy to find. Not hard at all. I have found, if you type this into the internet, you'll pull up an unbelievable amount of information. But the Indianapolis Star, USA Today, Mail Online, which is a United Kingdom publication, some of the major publications that are printing this material, putting it out there, <coughs> making it accessible to people. What can demons do to you? Did you know that people come up missing all the time? All the time. All the time they come up missing. They just drop off the face of the earth. They never, they never find their car. They never find their plane. They never find them. They just come up missing. They're just gone. Here are some more of the manifestations. They have showed a film. The officers hear the testimony of children picked up and flung against walls and furniture of adults being choked to death by some supernatural force of a demonic form appearing in different shapes. The shadow of a man, a black looming monster, an apparition of a withered old lady with red eyes and hood, of a house that bled clear, odorless oil, and of the household's three children convulsing and chanting satanic verses. In a chilling aside, in a separate audio recording made by one of the officers as he took pictures while his colleague filmed, uh, the two officers' speech is cut across by a whispered but clear, hey. Neither said it, neither said or heard it at the time. Both are now convinced it is a demonic rasp issuing a welcome or a challenge as they stood unwittingly on the lip of the portal to hell. Certainly few involved in the case wanted it when it began in early spring 2012, but today the veteran police officers, experienced physicians, paramedics, nurses, social workers, and clergy linked to the case speak of being attacked by demons, profoundly shaken, and left with little choice but to believe that something possessed the 32-year-old mother of three and rented home in which she, her children, her mother lived from November 2011 until May of 2012. And that, of course, is just a little bit of what went on in that home, if you can call it a home, a couple of years ago. And where did it come from? It came from the world that I preach against. Your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you have no protection against the spirit world that I just told you about.
if you do know the Lord Jesus Christ, you have everything you need to be equipped with to deal with it. Don't seek it out. Don't seek it out. These are powerful beings. They can ruin your family, ruin your life, and given the right circumstances, even kill you. You need the protection of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But here's the point that I want to make with this morning. This country is so crazed, so, I don't know what word to use for it. The only thing most of the people in the church house this morning have on their mind is a ball game. They're going to pro play this, this afternoon or this evening sometime. That's all they're thinking about, the ball game. Somebody told me in Sunday school this morning, they said, it's been rumored that at halftime during this Super Bowl ball game that they're going to have sodomite weddings. That just recently in the Grammy Awards, they did have sodomite weddings in the Grammy Awards. And along with the sodomite wedding, they had a satanic worship service too during that Grammy Award, uh, somehow, sometime during the award. So if the church house meets this evening and they have a big giant screen and they have to bring, they have to get, they have to have that to get the people in. And so they come in and they all sit down there and they, they, and they kick back and they're watching the ball game. Then when halftime rolls around and the sodomites get married, what's the reverend going to say to the people gathered together in the house? We're on the verge of an absolute manifestation of spirit power like you have never seen before. The Antichrist is about ready to come to power. He's brainwashed a whole nation. The church is a joke. Here and there, here and there, congregations of Bible-believing people that love the Lord, they're here and they're there. They're here, believe me, till Christ comes. But as far as the church exercising any kind of influence over this nation, the salt of the earth, the light of the world, that's a joke. That doesn't exist. Now let me talk to you personally this morning. I've paid a price for this and I'll pay more. I know what's coming and I know what's going to happen, but I know where I'll go. I'll go to the blood, I'll go to Christ, and I'll go to the Bible. I had, I had an issue this morning before I ever got out of bed. I know what's happening. I'm, no, I'm not a novice. I know what's going on. I ask you to pray for me. Pray for me and I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you to equip yourself and be ready to deal with this stuff. I'll pray for you for God to give you the wisdom you need to take care of your children and keep garbage away from them. Keep the occult away from them. Watch who their friends are. Watch where they go. Watch every, every part of their life. There was a time 50 years ago you could turn a kid loose and go out in the yard and play and not worry about it. Not anymore. Some pervert's liable to grab your son or daughter. So you've got to be careful today. You've got to be careful what, they, what, you, what you put in front of them, what they read, who their friends are. Be very careful. And if you are messing around with pornography, or you're messing around with a Ouija board or tarot cards, or any kind of an occult thing, or some group that you're with is doing it, and they're trying to entice you into it, get away from them. Because if this stuff starts happening in your life, some people can't handle it. They just blow their brains out. They cannot handle this. They can't handle it. I looked at the foot of my bed and I saw a man standing there. Just as clear as I'm looking at you. I said, Lord Jesus, in the name of Christ and by thy precious blood, you leave here. It's gone. Now, a lot of people are afraid to say things like that because they're afraid to be branded as nutty. All right? They think, well, this guy's hallucinating. This guy's about ready to go off the deep end. No, I'm a target. I'm a target. I know I am. But by the grace of God, I'll do what God called me to do. Now, I hope this helps you. Before you walk out of this building tonight, before you go to bed tonight, deal with it face to face. Deal with it. What caused that boy to walk backward up a wall? And it is corroborated 
by many witnesses. It happened in a hospital emergency room, not in some dark satanic chamber out here where the circumstances could be controlled, you know, where, where, it could be, where, there, could, where there could be illusions and so forth. This happened in a hospital emergency room, and the nurses wouldn't go back in that room. Deal with it. I hope it helps you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I've given, I've given them what you gave me. Now I've got peace. And maybe there's somebody in this house today, or somebody who hears this over the internet, somebody will hear it later. They need to come out of where they are. And I give you, I give you advice right now. Run if you have to. Run and leave that place. If it's the house you live in, get out of it. Run from it and run to Jesus. Find you a Bible-believing church and people that will support you and pray with you and help you. Lord Jesus, I pray now in thy holy name that of all things, I don't want to fail in this, that they come to Jesus, they come to Christ, that they come to blood, they plead the blood. The Son of God is our only hope. He's our only protection. We have no protection against Satan. We are no match for Satan, but the Lord Jesus is more than a match for him. And if we're true believers in the Son of God, we have that shield of faith, that helmet of salvation, that breastplate of righteousness, and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Lord God, give us that that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to know our enemy, to know his tactics, and not be children of this world, not be this stupid, ignorant, brainwashed, this, this pleasure-loving generation that we're living in right now that has no idea of what's coming down the pike against them. They're swallowing the spirit that's put up on the stage at halftime when they see this perversion before their eyes. They're receiving that spirit. They're, they're accepting that. And when they accept that, they accept what goes with it and all of the satanic power that there, that's there. In Jesus' sweet holy name I pray. And for Jesus' sake, I ask it. Amen.